I hope this video today will give you a real insight on what's going on inside the cockpit and the workflow that is involved in learning to fly. Okay, I am in. Okay. Now, turn that fuel pump off. Alright, now you can turn it on. Okay. If you turn it on before that, I don't know if it's running or not because both are on. Clear! There you go. The uh, kind of personal attention that you cannot get when you're learning to fly from any videos on YouTube or any video training courses without having a certified flight instructor in the cabin with you. So today I bring you inside the cabin close and personal and uh, you'll be able to see exactly the process that I'm going through physically and emotionally and mentally what it's like for me to learn to fly. Now I am really blessed to have a great uh, certified flight instructor, CFI Bob Schneider, and uh, he's been wonderful to work with. If you're looking for a gyroplane instructor, I would highly recommend uh, Bob. I'll have his contact information below. So we are flying the Cavalon gyroplane from Autogyro. Automatic weather observation. One, one, five, five, Zulu. Weather, wind, two, one, zero, at three, visibility, one, zero, clear. Below, one, two, thousand, temperature, one, seven, Celsius, two point, one, five, altimeter, three, zero, two, four. Fully the basement procedures in effect. Enter downwind at 1200 feet at the water tower, two miles south of the airport, remaining on runway 29. Rotocraft use light traffic for runway 29. At all. Alright, so now we have the wind direction. Okay, the wind's at 210. And Bob's saying, alright, David, where right, are we so going? We'll take one or two niner. Okay. So that is a classic example of Bob Snyder's training. He's awesome. Instead of just saying, David, do this, and giving me a fish, he is actually teaching me to think through the process. Bait bridge, hotel bridge, just trying final tonight, bait bridge. That's another pilot in the area. She is coming in from her early morning flight training, and she's what we call broadcasting in the dark, letting other pilots know what her, where she is and what her intentions are. Uh, Bob and I are usually out here first thing in the morning, 8 o'clock, uh, Monday through Saturday. Uh, when we, and that's a great time to fly because we usually have the best weather in the morning. So it's unusual actually to have anybody out uh, flying at the same time we are first thing in the morning. All right, so she is uh, now clear of the runway. She says that, uh, so the runway's open. Now she doesn't know if anybody's listening, but uh, we broadcast, uh, like I mentioned, in, in the dark, so that other pilots know what our intentions are. So first of all, what we do is we say the airport that we're at, in this case, Bay Bridge. Uh, we're talking to the traffic because there's no tower. Uh, when, you t when there's a tower, you're actually asking for permission. Here we're telling them what our intentions are. Uh, we tell them where we are, what we want to do, and then we end with the location again. So where we are waiting for the motor to warm up to, in order to check the ma magnetos before we start flying. So you can see me checking the gauge over there on the left hand side, uh, seeing what the temperature is. Okay, it looks good. Did, did she turn off? I don't, don't hear her, and I don't see her. So in my mind right now, what I'm doing is, uh, I remember there was another plane there. She said that she was off the runway, but I haven't seen her line up. To okay, go out. I see some color underneath that five zero. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. So just kind of processing who else is in the airspace. It was about a zero to four Bravo, Bravo. It's 11 miles north of the airport. We'll be Okay, when we were doing that mag check, there was another uh, airplane called out, and I heard that he was 11 miles away. So now I'm, I'm thinking, okay, what should I be doing? So he's a ways out. I think we're clear. 
All the gauges look good. I realize that he's quite a ways out. Uh, I should go ahead and take off. We have plenty of time to uh, take off and be out of his way. Ready. Baby traffic, Green Dyer, departing runway 29 or staying in the pattern. Right traffic, Baybridge. It's a very precise what we're trying to say here in a particular order. And I try to kind of process that before I, I do that so that I uh, am stating good information clearly so the, air, the aircraft in the area knows what my intentions are, where I am. And so they can uh, adjust to that like every other air, uh, air airplane does. All right, I hope you like this uh, new layout here. I'm gonna, let me know down in the comments below. Do you like the side-by-side? -side? Is it too small? I wanna give you perspective from both cameras. All right, you can see I got my hand forward. We're trying to get the RPMs up to, uh, well, we wanna get the rotor really to 200 RPMs. So now the rotor up on top is spinning at 200 RPMs. I pulled the stick straight back. And I'm, now I'm just waiting till we get enough forward motion to get lift on the rotor, which is our wing. There we have forward motion. Push the stick straight forward. And I'm going right down the center of the runway. Add a little bit to the left, that looks good. Pretty smooth takeoff. Yep, that was a good takeoff. All right, so now we're just climbing to get up into the pattern. And the pattern is basically a rectangle around the one side of the airport so that the planes are, the aircraft are flying in the same direction, the same altitude. We know where to look for each other. Uh, it makes it for a very safe area to fly. All right, so now I'm probably getting close to 400 feet in elevation. Baybridge traffic, Green Driver turning right, crosswind, runway 29 or staying in the pattern, right traffic, Baybridge. Okay, just gave the other aircraft the information. Baybridge traffic, Cirrus 4 Bravo Bravo is five miles north of the airport. We'll be entering a left traffic pattern for uh, runway 29, Baybridge. Okay, the other aircraft identified where he is. Now, uh, I'm just going to pick up from where we were yesterday, figuring I'm, I need to do the same thing. Baybridge traffic, Green Tower turning right, crosswind runway 29 or staying in the pattern, right traffic, Baybridge. And the same thing is that what we've been practicing for the last many hours is uh, takeoffs and, t and landings. Uh, the, the bulk of my 25 hours so far have been takeoff and landings, and that's where you really need to be sharp because that's where most incursions or problems happen. I'd straighten that string up a little bit. Yeah. Bob just pointed out, you can see in the right-hand window there, the, what we call the telltale string in the center of the windshield, and that should be straight. When it's straight, we're flying clean and efficient uh, the air is moving around the aircraft evenly for the best uh, flight. So uh, he noticed that uh, and I'm, I adjusted to it by uh, adjusting my foot pedals, getting the right rudder yeah, to, make, to make, uh, make the string go straight. David Trap, the green driver turning right, base runway 29 or full stop, Baybridge. Okay, so I've decided that it's time to turn towards the runway. And so I called that out and now I'm slowing down my uh, th uh, engine. I'm trying to maintain a, uh, the same constant speed of 60 knots and I'm trying to guess my best guess on altitude. Baybridge traffic, green driver turning final runway 29 or full stop, Baybridge. Okay, so I've I'm making my turn here and lining up to the runway. That's Baybridge traffic, Cirrus 4 Bravo Bravo is coming up on the water tower uh, south uh, east of the air, southwest of the airport, and we'll be entering a left downwind for runway 29, Baybridge. Okay, things are going smoothly. Uh, until right there. You let that touch the ground, it was going way too fast. So it's hard for me to see the dial and the replay here uh, on the size of the screen that I'm using for editing, but I think my speed was good, but I, I touched down much too soon at the speed I was at. So my, my incoming speed I think was 
close to 60 mile, uh, 60 knots, and I should have uh, done a flare and just kind of hung in the air a little bit longer. That would have slowed me down, and I would have had a good touchdown. Baybridge traffic, Cirrus 4, Bravo Bravo, midfield, left downwind, 2-9, Baybridge. So what I'm doing right now is really processing what I did right uh, and ha having positive congratulatory thoughts in my head. Okay, good job, David. You did that. You landed safe. Uh, uh, now what do we need to work on on the next time? So I always try to be optimistic in my mind and then I'll start, start problem solving so I have a better result the next time. Baybridge traffic for Bravo Bravo, <clears throat> turning left base, 2 9. I don't find it productive at all to sit there and beat myself up emotionally or mentally for a mistake. I just use it as a learning opportunity. Baybridge traffic, green driver, clear runway, 2 9 or Baybridge. Okay, I wanted to give the other pilot a uh, heads up that I'm off the runway, he's clear, no interference for me, uh, and uh, not to worry about me. He can probably see me. Already. Favorite traffic, zero four, Bravo, Bravo, current final, runway two nine. So he's lined up to ready to come down. And we're just taxing to get lined up uh, to take off again. Now I have had uh, the last couple times, last couple days, I've struggled with staying in the center line as we're taking off. So between the time that Bob and I were practicing, I went out yesterday in my gyro and did some practice ground maneuvering uh, with my pedals to make sure I could get full extension on the rudder and on my pedals and um, that I was doing things properly because I, for some reason I'm drifting too far over to the left on my takeoffs. I'm trying to problem solve what's causing that. And in my mind I'm thinking that I'm under pressure that I've got too much pressure on my left uh, rudder pedal, which is not allowing my right rudder pedal to go all the way down to where it needs to be. And so I've been practicing on, and I'm sitting on my bed back at the, uh, my room, practicing pushing down my right pedal and then lifting my left foot up to make sure I don't have any pressure from my left foot on the left pedal while I'm pushing down the right pedal. I'm hoping that will solve the problem of me drifting over to the left while I, I'm go doing my takeoffs. You'll find here in a moment that that wasn't the solution. Okay, so I look over my shoulder, I see that the other airplane is uh, really off the runway, just turning off the runway, and I decided let's go ahead and do this. Baybridge traffic, green gyro departing runway 29 or staying in the pattern, right traffic, Baybridge. And Baybridge traffic 4, Bravo Bravo is turning clear of runway 29. And indeed, he's clear of the runway, uh, so no, no, there was no need to sit there and wait for him to broadcast that. So we're going to line up here again for our next takeoff. We want to have both uh, pedals evenly, and, uh, and we want to uh, be str pointing straight down the runway. We're going to go through the run-up uh, process again with getting the the uh, rotor uh, in a pre-rotation mode. You can see on the right window, you can see the rotor starting to turn. Once we get up to 200 RPMs, stick goes forward. I mean, stick comes back. Sorry. Straight back, I increase the RPMs to about 46, 4700, and we're waiting for that lift. There it is, you see me move the stick forward and a little to the left. And now I'm on the left side of the runway. Uh, that didn't work out too well. I'm kind of bobbling around here in the air got up okay uh, safely but not nearly as good as I can uh, I, I can do much better than that and I know I can do better than that 
Now I'm thinking in my mind, okay, what did I do wrong? Why is this still happening to me? What do I need to change to fix this problem? Because I want to be consistent in, in, in all my okay, This time I beam the numbers. Power off, full idle. Okay. Favorite second strike. Okay. Favorite traffic green driver turning right. Crosswind one way two niner staying in the pattern right traffic favorite. Okay, so Bob is now saying giving me another assignment here. This is precision landing, and we're going for the second stripe after the numbers. Favorite traffic green driver turning right. Downwind one way two niner full stop favorite. So right now I am processing where do I need to be, what altitude, what speed, how far away from the runway before I start turning on base kind of do the math in my head, sort of like paying, playing pool or billiards, uh, because it's all angles uh, when you're playing pool or billiards. It's, uh, are you giving a backspin on the ball? Are you um, hitting at a certain angle to get a deflection? It's, uh, and that's what I'm kind of trying to figure out in my mind. What, how do I line up my shot or my landing here so I have a good landing? Hey, we're at the numbers. All right, so whenever we're at the numbers as we're practicing, we slow down. Baybridge, green driver returning face, runway 29 or full stop, Baybridge. Okay, so I'm now, I've decided, okay, this is as far as I should be. Bob's not telling me where I need to be. He's letting me, trying to figure that out myself, which is what I really need to do is, because he's not always going to be sitting there. I need to figure out how far I need to be and what speed and, and uh, my descent. Favorite screen driver turning final runway two nine at full stop. Favorite. Okay, so I'm trying to talk uh, on the radio so other people know what's going on. I'm also trying to fly. Uh, you, it, you know, there's a saying: aviate, navigate, and communicate. And I'm trying to do all of them right now. And we landed before the numbers on the runway. All right, a little short, let's try that one again. Okay. That's Bob being very kind. Uh, I was supposed to land on the second set of stripes past the numbers. We just went over the numbers. Uh, so I was, I was supposed to fly over the numbers there. Then there is a first set of big stripes past the numbers and then a second set of big stripes. So I'm driving right now on the runway that I should have been flying over. Now, uh, so that I was I way undershot it, but the day before I was a thousand feet past the target. So uh, I'm not happy with, with the landing, but it's improved from the previous day. And that's why we spend so much time uh, going over the same material is to uh, clean up my processes and be more precise in what I'm doing so I can be more consistent. And so here's the stripes that I should have landed at. You can see it's quite a ways down the runway. So again, what am I doing in my head? I'm thinking about uh, what I need to do to correct that. And Baybridge traffic, green gyro, clear runway 29 or Baybridge. How do I make this work so I, I can figure it out in my head and, and make it work every time? You know, pilots have multiple checklists that they work off, but there's no checklist that say you need to be at this altitude, at this speed, at this distance to land at this spot on the runway. Uh, Bob has said it um, multiple times, you need to learn to fly by the seat of your pants. And that's really what it is. It's more feeling. Once you get the mechanics down, uh, it's more really feeling than, than anything else. And it just comes with doing it over and over and over again. So when you do get it, it feels really, really good. You put all the pieces together and it happened. You had a great takeoff. You had a great landing. Uh, you, you did the, the calculations right in your mind. Paper gyro, gyro, green gyro turning, uh, departing runway 29 or staying in the pattern, Bayprit. Okay, you see I'm uh, kind of over-processing, uh, trying to go through everything I need to do, what they call the workload. 
in the cockpit, and I hadn't pre-thought what I was going to say on the on the uh, announcement there. So, okay, so I'm probably just taking a deep breath, uh, clearing my mind, focusing. Let's just focus on this takeoff. Let's just nail this takeoff right here. Still trying to figure out what I need to do to get a good takeoff, so I don't drift to the left. I want you to watch the stick when I move it forward. That stick should be straight back. So I pull that I pull that stick back. But now you see I crop I creeped it over to the left. I'm I'm to I'm to the far right of that center line and now in just seconds I'm to the far left of the center line and I'm fighting that my my uh, rudder is full, all the way to the right I can't go any further on my right rudder and I'm, I make a clean uh, at least safe um, safe into the air but I'm really disappointed with myself and I'm just racking my brain what am I doing wrong why can't I make this thing go straight and uh, I, I just don't have an answer I've done about everything I can think of Baybridge traffic green driver turning right crosswind one way two niners staying in the pattern Baybridge I guess the rudder worked out well that time huh I had my left foot completely off of the uh, pedal. Baybridge traffic, green driver turning right, downwind runway 29 or Baybridge staying in the pattern. So part of that was you're kind of preloading the left um, cyclic uh, a little bit too, you know, too early. The flip, too much left stick too early? Yep, okay. So yeah, it's going to want to drift over to the left, okay? What a golden insight. You'll see from the next uh, uh, takeoffs here, that, that that's exactly what I was doing. I, I, was, I knew that I, I needed to have left stick when I took off because, the, the, because it's a rotorcraft, it's, it's going to want to tilt to one direction, so I'm kind of uh, anticipating that but I'm getting my stick set up too soon. Baybridge traffic, green driver turning right, phase runway 29er, full stop, Baybridge. All right, so I'm trying to put that to the back of my mind. I get this golden nugget from Bob. He's really helpful, very kind in how he, he, he shared that with me. And now I'm thinking about my landing. Baybridge traffic, green driver turning right, final runway 29er, full stop, Baybridge. Things feel like they, they, they happen really fast in the cockpit, and you know, they kind of do. There's a lot to Very process. Good. Okay, now we're getting lined up, uh, looking yeah. at my speed. This time we, we landed a little bit further down, but still a long way from uh, the target. Uh, so, better for sure, but, you know, not by much. Still an improvement. I'm going to give myself, uh, an, you know, a, 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 a small thumbs up for that. Safe landing. I am not going to force the airplane, the aircraft, into a dangerous situation just to try to hit a mark. It just doesn't make sense. So what I am going to do is re rework what I'm thinking and my approach and what I need to do differently. Do I need to be closer to the airport? Uh, on the downwind so I'm not so far away when I cut the engine what is it that I need to do and I'm just processing it this is uh, how we grow this is how we learn a language this is how we learn to walk it's you just keep working at it and each time you get a little bit better so we're progressing you can see Bob is very calm I don't know how he stays that calm uh, but he's a, a soothing uh, effect in the cockpit and I'm, I'm glad to have him there we, we knew we spent 25 hours in this cockpit together so far. He's wonderful. Baybridge Tower, Green Tower, clear runway 29er, Baybridge. 
Oops. Ooh, new tower here. Oh, thank you. Okay. That's me kind of being overworked right, this there. time, um, we're going to kind of extend our, our downwind a little bit. So this will be a powered um, precision approach. And it'll be, you can kind of, kind of simulate maybe we've had to extend our, our downwind a bit because there was a run, you know, airplane taking off on the runway or one that's on final, whatever, okay? Which we've done a couple times. Yes. Okay, we're up for another challenge. Bob, I, I love it when it comes together. It's, uh, I may have been you wrong. said, you come in at 60, you come at the right angle. I must have nailed it. There, and you just settle right down. Pedal straight. Putting the pieces together. Okay. So that's me reconfirming to myself that, uh, you know, I, I, I'm learning, I'm, I'm progressing, and that I can do this. That I can be a safe pilot. So I must have hit the numbers uh, wherever Bob had mentioned. It's hard for me to remember uh, exactly, but it looks like I did a pretty good job on that one, which I'm glad. Baybridge traffic, Green Driver departing runway 29 or staying in the pattern, Baybridge. Okay, so that I get that and then uh, that call out there correctly. Now let's just focus on taking off here. Let's do this right, David. All right, so we're not, so Dave is thinking in his head. All right, do not move that stick to the left too early. Wait till the wheels are off the ground before you move that stick over, or just as they uh, come clear of the ground, and then that's when you're gonna to need to move the stick. Don't do it too early. Anticipate it, but don't over-anticipate. Okay, let's get things revved up here. Take a deep breath. Everything's going to be fine. Going through the same steps over and over, so it becomes mu muscle memory. Here we go. I can hear it. It's just about ready to go. Right there. We're lining up just to the right of the center line. We're waiting. There it is. Notice that stick went straight this time. It did not go to left, and there's yep, a little bit to left. Exactly what you said. There it is. Right Get when I needed it. Effect. What Easy. a big difference. Yep. There we go. Okay. I was preloading the, pre the rotor too soon. Thank you. Made big difference. So I did not have the problem of drifting to the left. I, I need to pay more attention. Uh, yeah, good guess, huh? Good guess. Yeah. I love Bob's kind of dry humor, uh, very relaxing. Uh, it's just great. You know, you got to pick up, see if either works more with you. Bob and I think work well together. Baby's traffic, Green Driver turning right, crosswind runway 29er, staying in the pattern, Haybridge. Okay, so my, now I'm thinking, what's Bob going to throw at me again? Uh, something new, or are we going to do the same thing here? We'll find out. Maybe a traffic green driver turning right, base, uh, cross, downwind, runway 29er, staying in the pattern, Bay Bridge. Usually if I don't quite hit the mark, he'll have me do it again. Okay, we're going to extend the uh, downwind here. Yep, we're going to go up uh, just beyond that second shopping center up there. Okay. This side of the water. Yep, this side of the water. To the back side yep. of the shopping center. It's a McDonald's uh, cracker barrel. It's up there. Okay, I want to make sure that we're communicating and that we're not just talking. So I'll ask Bob clarifying questions. So there's no reason for me to be guessing what he means. I'm just going to ask about. So this sure. is the scenario. Maybe there's an airplane on on final. We just got to give give him some space. So we're just extending our downwind somewhat, okay? Now he's giving real world application to the exercise. Hey, you know, and this happened a couple days ago where we had to extend. 
And so I'm familiar with the process. This is how I do basically, it. yeah, you want to hold your altitude. Very good. So I'm at 800 feet. I'm at 60 knots, looking good. And now I'm deciding, okay, where do we start turning? I see the McDonald's and it uh, looks like it should start turning. Favorite traffic, Green Jaguar we're turning right, base runway 29 or Favorite. So this should be a real easy landing. We've got lots of room here. And now it's just gonna be me managing my speed and my uh, descent rate. So we have a nice, easy uh, uh, descent down to the runway and anticipating going long. Hey, bitch. Traffic, Green Driver turning final runway 29er. Full stop, Baybridge. Now here's the uh, here's the next wrinkle. We're gonna approach just like you wanna land on the numbers, but then on that first round out, you're gonna power up. Okay. You know, I wanna be around 60, just kinda try to stabilize on 60. That makes everything so much easier. Yeah. That's Bob being kind of saying, hey David, you're going too fast. Watch what you're doing. Okay, got it. Thanks. Th appreciate the heads up. Now let's uh, concentrate on the task at hand. We're going to do a go around or are we going to do nope. You're going to power up. We're going to land down there in between those two big white stripes. Okay, coming down on the numbers. Yep, on that first round out. You'll just power up a little bit. Okay, here's the first round out. Power up. We're going to land on the, yep, in between those white stripes. Okay, got it. Hold that nose up, hold that nose up, there you go. And power it down. Okay, when you do it right, it just kind of floats down to the ground. It's a beautiful feeling. All right, same kind of approach, except this time we're gonna land here with this set of stripes, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna go for a, a, a longer, we're, we're, this is called... Ideally, um, we'll be set down right here. Air taxi. Okay, so wheels touch down here or stop? Oh, we wanna, yeah, we want to... Wheels touch down there and, and stop. Okay. You should be able to... I mean, we just did it, right? Mm -hmm. Favorites traffic, green tire, or clear runway 29er. I mean, we stopped within the length of those stripes. Yeah. Yeah, it does not take much room for an uh, auto gyro to land. Gyro We're just going to uh, go down over the numbers again, power up, yep, and then go a little further. So it's just an air taxi okay. from those numbers down here. Okay. Okay, just me clarifying. Want to make sure in my mind what, uh, we're, what we're doing here. I've got the assignment, got it clear. Now what we need to do is taxi further. And if you remember, this is kind of like the last part of the low hop. Which you got to be an ace at, right? Yes, I mastered that. Okay. So there should be no problem with this one. Okay. Alright, that's Bob. Just being a good guy, keeping the spirits kind of light in the cockpit there. So, he understands there's a lot of stress. And when the wheels touch the ground, throttle all the way back. You know, some instructors could be yelling at you or, you know, putting you down. That's just not Bob. Um, it's not productive. And it just deteriorates the student much faster. I'm learning a lot how to be a better person, really, and help others through. Baybridge traffic, green driver departing runway 29 or staying in the pattern, Baybridge through how Bob is uh, teaching me. Hey, so at this point, I should have my takeoff taken care of. Uh, I should be able to consistently have nice, even takeoffs in a straight line. Let's see how I do this time. Bob really helped me out with uh, not getting that stick to the left too soon. I've got uh, everything else. I know. I know how to do everything else. Let's see if I can nail this takeoff.
right here. There it is. I should stay to the right of that line because that's where I that's where I took off. Yes. There it is. Okay, we're up. Thank you so much, Bob. Literally a one inch difference in the stick position, and when I moved that stick, it made all the difference. Now I'm 25 hours in the cockpit with Bob. To get a sport pilot license, uh, you need a minimum of 20 hours of, of flying. I could have done that, but um, I, I just wanted to make sure I was the best I could be before I fly all the way back to Idaho, 2,000 miles, and that's why I'm getting my private pilot license. Hey, bridge traffic, green driver turning crosswind runway 29 or staying in the pattern. Hey, bridge. I really uh, feel I'm making good progress. I still have a lot to do. Uh, you'll see that in this landing here, uh, but I'm making progress, which is what I'm supposed to be doing every time. Hey, bridge traffic, green driver turning right, downwind, runway 29 or staying in the pattern. Right traffic, hey bridge. Okay, so I really have a what I think is a long uh, air taxi here, much longer than I've done before. Well, I have done some low hops, so that really is what this is, is what Bob was talking about. So I've done this before, uh, but it was from the ground going up just a few feet, and going down the length of the runway, and then back down. Here I'm doing it from the air. And let's see if I can uh, make the proper adjustment uh, as I'm coming down for a landing and float it all the way down to the target. Okay, going for a long uh, downwind. Just confirming uh, with Bob, I, uh, I remember what he told me to do and we're just going further than what we normally do. So he's not wondering what I'm what I'm thinking, what I'm doing. And this, for me, is a really long way uh, to, to be away from the, the airport because the gyro takes up so little uh, maneuvering space, you don't need to be as far away as airplanes typically are when they do landings. You know, honestly, most of the landings that we're doing are, you know, really short landings. Hey, bridge traffic, Green Dower turning right base, runway 29 or full stop, Bay Bridge. And they're called uh, short finals. I don't know why, it's short finals. Um, but for a gyroplane, it's kind of normal. Yeah, I love flying the gyroplane. It's such a wonderful aircraft to fly and make it very easy. Hey, bridge, Green Dower turning final runway 29 or full stop Bayridge easy doesn't mean you get you know you need five hours and you're done no uh, take as much time as you need to be proficient uh, in my mind in my experience it's more enjoyable uh, with fixed wing although fixed wing certainly has its place the gyroplane is really a kind of low slow sightseeing recreational vehicle um, okay so let's concentrate on the landing here that you can see the runway is way down there. I'm watching my speed. I should be at 60 knots. Uh, speed looks good. Altitude looks good. Uh, I'm coming straight in. Everything looks good here. Now I need to make sure that I get enough power. Going for the second stripes. And right by the intersection. Right here is where I should up, be power. power. Up. And I should I should have given much more power. I'm going to come short. Not enough power, not enough power. You can hear me trying to get more, some more power there. I'm trying to keep it up. Okay, okay. I, I, I got so. it up. And power off when the wheels touch the ground. Okay, I'm, I'm just short, uh, but I felt I was getting too low. I wasn't gonna force it. It's an okay landing, not nothing to write home about. Safe, straight, uh, so I'm happy. You know, I'm I'm good with that. I just need to kind of work on being more precise, but much better than much better than I was a day or two ago. I mean, I'm looking at my logbook here while I'm narrating this. Hey, 
traffic, Green Tower clear, runway 29er, Baybridge. And uh, the, we, I had with Bob the very, the, I had. We'll see if we can get right on it this time. 10 hours of kind of preliminary. It needed more power on that when we came across the numbers. Well, you could have added a little more power there in that final part. So you're, you were slowing up, you know, slowing up, and you started to sink. That's when you started to need, you know, remember, stick is airspeed. Yep. Throttle is altitude, so. Yeah, I'm looking at the last. Uh, you may be feeling like you're landing with more power. And, and you are, you know, obviously. The engine's running a lot faster than it has been in most of your landings. But it lands, and the, uh, you've got to have that nose up. Actually lands very slow with very little forward motion. The last 19 hours have been takeoff and landings. That's how important they are. And, you know, I really listen to what Bob says because when I can actually put into action the tips and the guidance that he's giving me, it just kind of all comes together. It's, it's like music. It's wonderful. And I'm trying to be consistent with that. All right, let's see how we do on this takeoff. That should be pretty consistent now on my takeoff as far as uh, running straight down the runway and having a nice level takeoff. Up a little right pedal there. That's okay, I, I corrected it. We're going straight. We're almost right down the center line here. There we go. Still down the center line. Not perfect, but uh, I've, I, with Bob's input, I'm now able to make sure I'm flying straight instead of coasting off the left. It was really bad before. Okay, hey, we'll do a uh, full stop on this one back to the barn, okay? Bob has a, a really good insight on how I'm feeling, um, and if I'm getting mentally or physically exhausted. Favorite traffic, Green Diver turning right, crosswind runway 29er, stay in the pattern, Baybridge. And in, you know, we'll either land, uh, we'll either end the day on something that was really bad, he knows I'm rattled, so we need to stop for safety's sakes, or we'll end on a high note. Baybridge traffic, Green Diver turning right, base runway 29er, stay in the pattern, Baybridge. But for me today, it was a really good day. Uh, really enjoyable, a, a lot of growth, and um, I, I feel like, I, like I'm, I'm progressing like I should be, and uh, hopefully if all goes well next week, I will be uh, doing my solo. I'm waiting for my rotors to come in, which will happen sometime between Monday and Friday next week. We'll get those assembled, and then I can start doing some solo time if I'm ready to do that in my own camera. this time, you're going to do the base at the first creek there. Okay, base at the first creek. All right, so new assignment. Rethink this, David. We can adjust speed, uh, all that stuff. What do we need to do to make Point this happen? for the second stripe. So he's given me a shorter distance uh, to, uh, for an approach to the airfield, but a longer air taxi. Baybridge, tra traffic, Green Diver turning base, runway 29 at full stop, Baybridge. So I need to be better on the power than I was last time. Uh, I have less distance. You know, I've really found that how far away from the airport doesn't really make that much difference if you just uh, are, are watching the airspeed. Baybridge traffic, green, green driver turning final, runway 29 or full stop, Baybridge. And your vertical descent uh, rate. So uh, we did S turns the other day. Uh, it was beautiful. Bob did an S turn to burn off some altitude, and it was like watching magic. 
It was awesome. It was beautiful. Okay, I should be powering up way all the way. I should much I should I need more power here. There's the first set of lines. Going for the second set. Bringing that nose up, bringing that nose up, bringing that nose up. I want to just be a couple feet above the ground. Oh, there we are, second set of stripes. We did it. Thank you, Bob. Awesome. You know, uh, someone mentioned that I have a lot of time invested in, into this venture, and I really do. Baybridge traffic, green gyro, clear runway 29 or Baybridge. And I've got to uh, pay Bob for his time. It's well worth it. I'm, I pay the aircraft owner for the use of the aircraft. But it's money well spent, time well spent, uh, for the uh, years and hours of time that I'll be able to spend with my wife uh, enjoying sightseeing and uh, doing other things with the with the uh, gyroplane. Really looking forward to having this. Very good. Okay, we just got the rotor lined up, so we take up very little space as we're uh, taxiing around the airport. Well, all I can say is gratitude is filling my heart for all your patience and tips and training and stop and talk and your little, you know. Everything is just, they really, I'm really grateful. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. I'm feeling more like a pilot in control and in command, but in control. I guess it could be the same thing. Okay, so great day with Bob. I'm oh, you're getting there. We got a couple more little things to do, then you should be um, pretty much ticking all the boxes for uh, getting ready to solo. Solo is a big deal. My iPad came in yesterday, so I loaded four flight. Um, I know we're a week or two away before using that, but just trying to think ahead. Yep, yep start looking at it. So the for flight app, we'll have videos on that I'm sure is help for flight planning and in flight. Uh, so anyway, I'm just kind of thinking ahead what I need to be doing. But uh, having a great experience here in Maryland, thoroughly enjoying the, uh, the gyro plane. I was sitting outside uh, today watching Bob with another student and a couple uh, pilots drove up on their bicycles they have a, a Cessna Skyhawk 172, and I told them I was flying a gyroplane, and they thought, oh, yeah, that little thing, that probably gets blown around a lot, and it's probably really hard to fly, and it's actually the opposite of both those things. It's so comfortable. I, I tell people when I first flew the gyroplane in California with uh, Mike that I thought they were going to you know, start playing classical music and serving wine. It was, it was like flying on a cloud. It's a completely different experience. I have flown hang gliders to see if I wanted to do that. Mm, no. I flew trikes. Uh, no, didn't like that. I've, I've flown the Cessna's 152's and 172's and it's just the, the bounce, bounce, bounce. The, the um, I just didn't like that. Then I get into the gyroplane with Mike and it was so amazing. It was That was it. Uh, so if you ever have an opportunity to, and you want a wonderful, safe, relaxing experience in an aircraft, find a gyroplane instructor somewhere and go on a discovery flight with them and just see how enjoyable this aircraft is. Um, I really looked at a lot of different manufacturers. I really, really liked what I saw from Autogyro. I really liked the side-by-side -side here to spend time with my wife so that she's not sitting behind me, that we can be enjoying the scenery together. Um, and so I liked it that it's enclosed. My mine has um, you know, not comfortable leather seats with uh, you know heated seats and adjustable lumbar. 
and so a, a nice digital display so uh, it's everything that I need everything that she needs to spend some good time quality time together relaxing and uh, in, enjoying the the beautiful sights in Idaho so I hope you enjoyed uh, spending the morning with Bob and me and uh, got a little insight on what kind of workload is going on inside the aircraft as you're learning to fly and as you're flying uh, every flight is different pilots are always honing their skills no matter how many hundreds or thousands of hours they have uh, this is LDS Prepper reminding you if you are prepared you shall not fear this is my way of preparing so when I'm flying, I have no fear. I'm aware, I'm alert, I'm processing, I'm adjusting and doing what I need to do to have a safe and wonderful flight with uh, going cross country or with my friends and family. Have a blessed day.